The opposite of a correct statement is a false statement, but the opposite of a profound truth may well be another profound truth. Prediction is very difficult, especially about the future. Those who are not shocked when they first come across quantum theory cannot possibly have understood it. Everything we call real is made of things that cannot be regarded as real. How wonderful that we have met with a paradox. Now we have some hope of making progress. No, no, you're not thinking. You're just being logical. There are some things so serious that you have to laugh at them. Never express yourself more clearly than you are able to think. A physicist is just an atom's way of looking at itself. Stop telling God what to do with his dice. The meaning of life consists in the fact that it makes no sense to say that life has no meaning. We are all agreed that your theory is crazy. The question which divides us is whether it is crazy enough to have a chance of being correct. My own feeling is that it is not crazy enough. Every great and deep difficulty bears in itself its own solution. It forces us to change our thinking in order to find it. Every sentence I utter must be understood not as an affirmation, but as a question. The very nature of the quantum theory forces us to regard the space-time coordination and the claim of causality, the union of which characterizes the classical theories as complementary but exclusive features of the description, symbolizing the idealization of observation and description respectively. Physics is not about how the world is. It is about what we can say about the world. An expert is a man who has made all the mistakes which can be made in a very narrow field. It is not enough to be wrong. One must also be polite. I myself find the division of the world into an objective and a subjective side much too arbitrary. The fact that religions through the ages have spoken in images, parables, and paradoxes means simply that there are no other ways of grasping the reality to which they refer. But that does not mean that it is not a genuine reality and splitting this reality into an objective and a subjective side won't get us very far. We are suspended in language. The Stone Age didn't end because the world ran out of stones. In our description of nature, the purpose is not to disclose the real essence of the phenomena, but only to track down, as far as possible, 
relations between the manifold aspects of our experience. But it is not possible to make progress there. Just if you have the wing of a butterfly, then certainly it is very regular with the colors and so on. But nobody thought one could get the basis of biology from the coloring of the wing of a butterfly. Quantum provides us with a striking illustration of the fact that though we can fully understand a connection, we can only speak of it in images and parables. We must be clear that when it comes to atoms, language can be used only as in poetry. The poet, too, is not nearly so concerned with describing facts as with creating images and establishing mental connections. Science only advances by renouncing its past. The existence of life must be considered as an elementary fact that cannot be explained, but must be taken as a starting point in biology. In a similar way as the quantum of action, which appears as an irrational element from the point of view of classical mechanical physics, taken together with the existence of elementary particles, forms the foundation of atomic physics. The asserted impossibility of a physical or chemical explanation of the function peculiar to life would in this sense be analogous to the insufficiency of the mechanical analysis for the understanding of the stability of atoms. The present state of atomic theory is characterized by the fact that we not only believe the existence of atoms to be proved beyond a doubt, but also we even believe that we have an intimate knowledge of the constituents of the individual atoms. The task of science is both to extend the range of our experience and to reduce it to order. This interpretation of the atomic number as the number of orbital electrons may be said to signify an important step toward the solution of the boldest dreams of natural science, namely to build up an understanding of the regularities of nature upon the consideration of pure number. There is no quantum world. There is only an abstract quantum physical description. It is wrong to think that the task of physics is to find out how nature is. Physics concerns what we can say about nature. 